Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 86 here at camp. I can't believe it. 86 weeks. I know. It's so gorgeous out where we sit. I face the window. Some natural light. The leaves are popping their bussies. And we just got the most fantastic DM walking into today's recording. I just like happened to check my phone before we started. And I like went to my little message request tab. And I saw we were tagged in a post. And this incredible image popped up. Jonathan, what was it? Camp counselors inspired little iced cookies. They were like shortbread cookies that this very talented woman, her uh, Instagram handle is Morsels by Madison. And she made little camp counselor cookies. I am really into this style of cookie. I always have it. And have you ever seen how they do it? Yeah. You like do the outline and you let it sit, right? And then you fill in the pool. They use a projector. Most times. Oh. Yeah, like, I, I, so I don't know how she did it, but I would assume that she probably went on Procreate, took our, like, our logo, and then kind of stenciled out the outlines and then projected it onto the cookie to get it done. Unless she did the whole thing freehand. And if she did, that's incredible. If she was a stencil, that's incredible. These cookies look just like us. We just shared them on our stories. I'm, like, blown away. She also did a little, a little raccoon, a little mm-hmm. boot. She did one of my mom wigs. A wig that says, knock it off. Knock it all off. I'm not freaking, I'm not freaking joking. I'm like blown away. Me to the wood texture. It's also like, I don't know. I've seen, anytime someone even does anything artistic about our show, about us individually, it just, you guys are so freaking talented. Do you like cookies like that? I love, and I just simple I cookie. love cookies like that when the Girl Scouts got rid of those cookies that nobody seems to remember, and they're very simple. What? Because I'm a simpleton. It, they were the zoo cookies, and they were squares, and they <laughs> no were shortbread cookies. Nobody remembers it. There's one picture I found on Google Images. I was like, did I dream this up? They had like circus animals or some. They had they had zoo animals. That's what it was. And the back of it was just chocolate. <laughs> and That's it was fine. shortbread. Yeah, but I love a shortbread cookie. What's my favorite shortbread company? I'll tell you guys. Lorna Dune. Oh. I don't even know if it's the best shortbread you could possibly get, but it's the best name a shortbread company could ever have. And the packaging? Gingham. It is gingham. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Lorna Dune. If I that I would be my Lorna drag Dune. name, I think. That's classic. It's actually like actually it's licensed. Well, when Jan Sport was a drag queen on Drag Race. They yeah. started doing the marketing as Jan Sport. That's her full drag name. And I'm if I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure like halfway through the press tour before the show even aired, they had to edit it to like Jan because Jan Sport found out and they're like, absolutely not. But then last year during oh, then Pride, gonna, they're gonna use it to their own advantage when it's trendy. Yeah, Pride last year she had her own collab with Jan Sport, which I think everybody wins at that point. Like, yeah. Whatever, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like she didn't create the name; it was a brand. Do you True. know what I mean? But um, very cool. Anyways, welcome back to the show. I hope you're settling into your morning commutes, your afternoon commutes, your dishwashing, your laundry folding, or just your simple entertainment. We are honored to be in your ears and on your screens. The way that flowed out of me. Yeah, that was incredible. I didn't even know where it was coming out. I wow. just kind of did it. That's a podcaster right there. This is what I'm bringing to the table. Mm. And it's the sm- smooth... Um, see, okay, now, now it's not. Now it's not. Now it's not. <laughs> it's hard to keep going. Not all of us can be Delilah. Delilah. Well, we had a very exciting weekend. Yes, we did. And I'm ready to talk about it. So my sister was visiting with her husband and my nephew, and we had a lovely weekend with them. And one of the big things, the reasons why they came, was because I got to do a live in class ride at Peloton Studios NYC. With Cody motherfucking Rigsby. Friend of the pod, friend of her lives, good guy in general. Yeah, of course. So if you remember, uh, probably like a month ago at this point, we were in Atlanta and we did his live show with him. On stage, holding the microphones. And we had a great time. And he was like, can you do me this favor? Can you and John do this? And we're like, yeah, totally. But it was like a great opportunity for us to get on stage. Yeah, it was and just fun. And support a friend. Mm-hmm. Have a fun, good old time. So my, me and my sister have been dreaming of doing 
Peloton rides in studio. So if you don't know, Peloton is an exercise bike that you can have at your house and it has this big motherfucking screen on it. And they have all these different instructors and you take these like, um, workout classes. So they have their, stu- they have a studio in New York where, like, where basically all the U S team shoots these classes and you can go in live in person. You can watch live on the app or I, lo- I do a lot of on demand ones. Have you ever done a live class like on the Peloton? Never because I like the show, like my videos, like every part of my life, I can't be told to do something at a certain time. I exactly. have to be ready to do it. Yeah, wait, I have no idea. What even day is it? It's a Tuesday at like 3.45. I don't know if we've ever filmed it this time before. No, we were going to plan it. We were actually going to record it at 6 today, but I was like, let's just get it done a little early because I was had a high energy. But to answer your question, no, I had never done any yeah. live on the app. So um, when she said she wanted to come, I was like, let me reach out to Cody and see if he can get us in. What a guy, what a champion, what a man. He was like, yeah, of course, like just show up and do whatever. So we get to the Peloton Studios in New York, Hudson Hudson Yard, and we walk in and it's very, very interesting experience. You have to get scanned in. It's all secure, whatever, whatever. We go down the stairs and there's a guy there and he's like, hi, how are you? And I thought it was like a normal like man that just worked there, but he was like waiting for us to show up because Cody, we were like friends of Cody. So it's oh, like, I thought you were going to say it was like someone who like was trespassing. No, it's like, if you're, if you're like, if technically I was like a guest, I wasn't like, I didn't book the class. I got like it from Cody. So they're like, Oh, he ushered us to like a private fucking room. Wow. It was like so chic. My sister, Peloton Prince. My sister was gagged. <laughs> she was and like to, for context here, I got my Peloton bike in 2020 as did a lot of us, like their stock, their success, Success, all really jumped a huge jump during COVID when everyone was locked in. But she's had her bike since 2018. Yeah. I remember when I first met you, she had just finished her like 500th ride. She's done 800 rides now. Nuts. I've done 250. So anyways, long story short, Cody came out of the green room. He had lunch with us. Um, well, he ate. We were just like freaking out because I was so panicked. Um, but it was like, it was so fun. And like my sister got to meet him and I felt excited that I got to like set this up and I'm excited that Cody said yes to it. One thing I've talked about on this show, I'm pretty sure is that like one of my biggest fears or insecurity is working out in public. Like I do not go to the gym because I don't like being watched working out. Okay, I'm man. very insecure with my body. It's like my long, my biggest battle in my life for my entire life will always be my perception of my body. I have this personality where I gain weight so easily. I love all fatty, big foods and I enjoy eating it, but I feel like I hate myself when I gain weight, which I really need to work on that in therapy for sure. But I, I love the Peloton because it's a great workout at home, you know? Mm-hmm. So... After Cody left to like go get his mic check and stuff like that up, the PA was like, "Oh, do you want to like, do, um, do you want to like go and like walk around and I'll show you some stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah, we'll do a little tour." And he's like showing us the different studios. He brings us to the control room where they have all of the cameras and they're like the people behind the scenes. And the girl's like, "Hi, nice to meet you." And we're like talking to her, and she's like, "This is where you're gonna be sitting," and it's like the two seats that are like very much on camera. I th- I thought how it was all going to work was that we were going to get a, we were going to be able to like pick our bikes first and I'm sure everybody wants those seats. Mm-hmm. I oh yeah. Do the not want seats. to sit there. I was like, I would pick seat in the back. I wanted the experience. I didn't need to be on camera. I don't need to have the proof of it. I know I was there and I wanted, and I wanted that to be enough, but they already set it up. And I was like, I'm not going to be like, no, no, no. When we see, I'll be like, whatever, we're going to do it. So he kind of ushers out quickly and he's like, okay, time to go. I was like, okay. Gets us our shoes. We go walk inside the studio. The entire class of 39 riders is already sat and strapped into the bikes. So you couldn't move even, even if you wanted to. You would be creating a whole production. Absolutely not an option. So, and my sister's loving it. <laughs> yeah. She's like obsessed. <laughs> and I'm uncomfortable because I don't know I don't want to be like annoying I feel like it's kind of annoying it kind of looks like no, I don't think because nobody's ever featured. Like they don't have a feature camera. Like it's well, always on Cody. Yeah. You're just you're you're there, but you're on the sidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of in the dark. Yeah. Like a creep. So we sat down, the girl next to me, she's like, I was wondering who these seats before. I tried to get this one, but it wasn't available. Oh yeah, she was sitting by herself, I saw. Yeah. Was she with somebody? Was it her birthday? No, she drove she came from North Carolina to the class. And but so we all strap in, right? And we're like there, we're on the bikes, like 20 minutes for the live class starts because it's a live class. And Cody walks in and it's like this big, like 
real production. He like enters my door you don't even see, like spotlight and everything. And like, what's up, bitches? Everyone's like freaking out. Cause he's like, he's a celebrity. He, uh, he was on Days with the Stars. He's a huge celebrity. And he's got a really incredible like presence. Like he walks in a room and people stop. He is, I will say that about Cody Riggs. He is such an incredible and nice person. He is. And he actually plays his persona a little bit. And I don't know if you'd be mad about him saying this, but I think he's really sassy on the bike sometimes. And he's not like that in person. He's, he's so sweet. He's so sweet and, and normal normal and yeah. yeah but he like really amps it up because we're all showmen here right we mm -hmm. all put on a certain kind of i don't know armor when we perform or whatever so he's like he's doing up and down he's giving everybody a high five talking asks if any birthdays there the girl next to me it was her birthday mm -hmm. and he's like when's your birthday and it was like four days previous and he was like bitch it's not your birthday okay <laughs> she's like i traveled state lines <laughs> please he was, but other there was four people in the class that was her actual birthday it's a hard class to get into. They're, they they open and they like they mm -hmm. buy out really quickly. Because you, you had tried to get into them before. hundred times. Like, hundred times. I, you didn't even say this, but your sister and you have tried to get into classes, but they've been booked and you've been trying for years, like even before we met Cody. You think getting a Taylor Swift ticket's hard? Try getting into a Peloton live class. It doesn't matter what you're taking. They're like so impossible to get into. And if you don't live in New York, it's a travel to go there. Which but is, yeah. Clearly so this girl did. Mm -hmm. So we do the class. Cody comes out. We was a 30 minute 90s pop ride. I don't want to be annoying. I don't know a lot of 90s music. I feel like people are going to be like, what? But I really don't. You do. You were lip syncing a lot of it, though. I, I well, took the ride a, this morning. There was a, stop. I'm going to throw up. We're not there yet. Okay? Stop. So I don't, I did, was I, stop. Was I really? I'm yes, gonna you did. <laughs> this is what I didn't want. The digital footprint. I would rather there be, there's digital footprint of me throwing up in a toilet shit face on my TikTok from four years ago. That's okay. Seeing me sweat on a bike, not to mention you guys, there's 39 people strapped into the bikes. Then there's Cody. It's 40 of us, right? In this class. They're, they always talk about on these, on these classes that there's fans on the ceiling. Where? Not a fan inside. Not a fan inside. You couldn't get a fan if it was hanging from the ceiling. And I wish it was. I wish it was. And at one point, I looked down at my arms. They were. They looked like I put baby oil on. I was sweating from head to toe. Um, and I was nervous. I was going to look really sweaty on camera because I sweat so much when I work out. And I was wiping my face with a towel every 30 seconds. It was so gross. But I will say, it went by so fast. What are those? Like, hashtag strong mama. Hashtag Pella teachers. Hashtag no. Pella nurses. <laughs> no, no, no. The, I don't sweat. I shimmer. Wait, pff, that was me, baby. I was looking like a mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, the class finished. It was really cool. I got a little, you get little like medallions on the app when you like do certain I love those. Rides. It's like a little sticker book. Mine is very sparse, but I I plan on um, getting more to my collection. Yeah. Well, there are like, there's some that we'll probably never get if we're never using their own machine. There's like specific for every like machine they have and stuff. Like what I was upset about, I think we did talk about it on the podcast before because I complained publicly about how they have like the artist pass thing, but I yeah. wanted like whatever artist I was doing. I forget who it was, but all that, all it says is artist, artist series. Yeah. It doesn't say like the artist. Correct. It was so funny because we got off the bike. Energy's high. We're like freaking out. My sister was like, I almost threw up at the 21 minute mark. And I was like, what? She pelotons all the time. Okay. Like she didn't, she was going harder than usual. I think we all were. Cause it's like the adrenaline of like doing your best while you're there. Um, but yeah, no, she's like, I almost threw up. And I was like, why? And she's like, I don't know. I think it was that green tea I drank. Has anybody ever gotten nauseous? from drinking green tea on an empty stomach. I didn't know it was a thing. You told me about this. I nearly threw up at my old job because I was switching it up. I was like, let me not get the jitters. Let me get green tea just to be like I remember healthier this. and herbal. herbal. And I felt so sick and I didn't realize that that's what it was from. I was like, oh my God, like I didn't drink last night. Why do I feel like that bile building up in your throat, like the muscles contracting, feeling like I need to get to a toilet because I'm going to puke. And then the next time I did it, because I did it like two days later, I had tea again, green tea again. And I was like, I wonder if it's the green tea because I never heard anybody talk about it. So I Googled it and it has happened to certain select people. I'm one of the chosen few. And so is your sister that if you drink green tea on an empty stomach, you can get extreme nausea she was like oh i ate this morning my calendar we had two scrambled eggs and two jimmy dean links okay 
it's not enough food. You just worked that out in the first three minutes of this ride and probably the anxiety on the subway over. Mm. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but she didn't puke, so. She didn't. It could have been worse. And we went to the bar right after and we got margaritas and chips and salsa to celebrate. As you should. Yeah. It's cool. Afterwards, you get to take a photo with Cody. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really cool. You get to like line up in front of the big Peloton P in the lobby and like everybody takes a photo. They're really smart. They have a camera guy with an iPhone on a tripod. Yeah. So people and, aren't fumbling like, oh, let me. Oh, I don't know how to use this thing. Pause for applause. Where's my camera app? One more, please. I was closing. Oh, my finger was in front of the camera. It's funny, though, because they just like put it in a big folder of the entire class. So you can see everybody. And I click through every single person. You did. You and your sister were taking attendance. You sat at the kitchen table for like a solid 40 minutes. I'm like, I was like, where was she sitting? I don't remember seeing her face. (laughs) You're like, oh, this is the guy who was sitting in that chair. (laughs) What are you guys talking (laughs) about? Well, we had to like really debrief on it. It was a really exciting moment, especially like we've been doing this for years. You know what I mean? I've fallen off for many months, but currently I'm on week seven of being on it. Yeah, you've been really on it. I had to for this class. I wasn't going to make a fool myself and not to brag but on the in the studio i was five out of 39 wow i was waiting for you crazy do they have like a leaderboard like on the oh it's i guess it's like right on the app they don't have to put it on the wall yeah no i know they don't yeah and the timer you can't see the time on the little thing it's like up on the wall hard to hear in there cody asked me a question at one point and i was like zachariah and i like didn't hear him i was like "Mm," like nodding and i was like i felt stupid because i was like just didn't hear it because it's like a very loud space but very cool uh, dream of mine. If you've ever wanted to do it, I don't know how to do it, but what? like to, to get the this? classes. I, if you go on Reddit, they like they know the schedule when the classes drop. But it's so fun. It's just so cool to like peel back the curtain. I'm so glad you guys went. Yeah, I love doing a workout class. Like yeah, I like yeah classes versus the gym like if i'm going to go somewhere publicly and work out in front of people i would rather do it in a class i used to do orange theory so much and i really enjoyed it i was at my peak physical shape when i did it i should really get back into it like even on the peloton i i have been getting better like this morning i had a great ride not to brag yesterday it shut off in the middle of it i don't know what happened it's never happened to me before regardless sometimes i just need somebody to yell at me and call me a little bitch And it just really makes me bump my legs faster. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me do it a little harder. However, there was (laughs) one guy I had, um, because they make you at Orange Theory wear the, um, like what we wear here, but you have to wear it on your arm. Heart monitor. Yeah, the heart monitor. Thank you. And somewhat, he was on Bachelor something. Very random. So it's, many this wasn't were on in the Bachelor, but it wasn't in New York. He won one of the Bachelor in Paradise. I don't know what Bachelor in Paradise is, but he won one of them. And now he lives back where he lives. I won't get specific, but he was there every day. And I didn't realize that that's who he was until one day Carly was like, that guy is, he was the winner of you Bachelor can, in Paradise. You can be specific. He, he literally like advertises his gym as, oh, I was on the Bachelor. Who what was his name? I don't remember what his name is, but he's, he's very public on, um, exactly. So why are you on being... Instagram? I don't know. Because basically I took too much Adderall that day and my heart was already at like red and it says up on the leaderboard for everybody to see. So I was already in the red and I had, I was coming from work to go there and he like called me out on it. He's like, what's going on on the leaderboard, my friend? I'm like, why, why would you do that? Why would you make me insecure? But I did like the other people that were there and they were really cracking the whip. I don't know. I just, I like it sometimes, you know? I wonder if it's like a kink based workout class oh probably you better pick up that fucking weight and you hold it you freaking hold that weight yeah you flimsy little beanstalk beanstalk i'll blow you over with a big breeze of air Uh uh-oh the window's open where did you go oh you call that a muscle more like a raisinette under a pillowcase you have small (laughs) balls oh okay he's like actually why are you in the locker room (laughs) (laughs) i think we found a hole in the market one thing about the show we're gonna find a hole in the market oh my god kinky workout videos they have to be they have you know who kind of made kinky workout videos who they I were, know who you're gonna say. I'm not saying it then. Okay. It wasn't kinky. Let's say yeah. Who cares? It was like definitely sexy. Ooh. Do you remember they did it on an episode of Girls Next Door? 
They all had to look Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's was, not what I thought you were going to say. It wasn't kinky, but it was sexy. Maybe it wasn't even sexy. Maybe I'm just assuming that because it's Playboy adjacent. It was like their boot camp. Oh, my God. Jonathan and I are obsessed with that show. Mm, we, so were, good. we were on a real rewatch for a long time. We were. We were on quite the kick. We got to like season four and a half and then we stopped. We always seem to stop things around season four and a half. Well, like I a think lot of shows, shows hit a lull. Yeah, that's true. It's like, let's spice it up. I'm bored. I love the journey of all three of those girls. I know some of them aren't friends, but um, I think after the fact, we learned so much about how dark it was being a part of that series and it being part of that like culture and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But they've all seriously, especially those three, they've landed on their feet and they're like making money and they're powerhouses. Girls Next Level Pod, we love that podcast. Um, We try to get Holly on this podcast. She's not going to be available. She'll be in Las Vegas, but we will keep trying for Holly Madison. Yeah, but she responded and that's a good thing. She did. She did. She's like, I wish I could. I can't. Um, yeah, but guests are coming. Did we talk about that at all? No, we didn't. Do we have a guest next week? Oh, my God. We might have a guest next week. I don't want to Woo! promise anything, but I, oh. I think next week, I'm scheduling wise. Yeah, I think next week we may have a guest. Yeah. Yeah. So I think things are going to be um, adding to Camp Shady Birch. Something will change. It's always going to be our show. It's always going to be the same energy in us. Yeah. But um, new and improved sections and... I think it's fun to have other people on, get other other counselors on here, get some other points of views and other conversations stirring. You know, there's only so many things we can tell to take a hike and bounce off the same, you know, True. shit back and forth. <laughs> it's always fun to have a new voice. I would love, oh my God, that would be so fun when we get to meet the campers one day for us to like pass the mic around, be like, everybody, take start a hike. Take a hikes. So taking your crushes of the week, like everybody's just like, I just feel like everyone has such ex- unique experiences that maybe I'm not even picking up on mm-hmm. that I could relate to. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, good things coming up. It was a good week. It's going to be a good year and we're happy you're here. Let's get into today's show. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Welcome back. To morning announcements, campers. This is the part of the show where we share news articles with you that you might have missed that we want you to spread like contained wildfire. Jonathan, will you please start us off with your story time? Yes, absolutely, I will. Um, okay, so this it starts off a little rocky, but it does, it gets happier. Okay. okay. So this comes from a Washington Post article by Sydney Page. It's titled, She Bought an Animal Testing Site and Turned It Into a Rehab Sanctuary. Oh. This woman named Shannon Keith, uh, she's an animal rights lawyer, which I didn't even know that there are animal rights lawyers, but I guess there are, and Shannon Keith is one. And she also founded Beagle Freedom Project, which is an LA-based nonprofit. And she founded that in 2010, where she rescues and rehomes animals used in research. So it's called Beagle Freedom Project because beagles, I didn't know this, beagles are the most used breed for testing. Did you know that? When it comes to like animal testing on dogs? No, I wonder why. I'm not sure. That's sad. It's yeah. sad. I don't support that at all. However, Beagle Freedom Project rescues all animals. So for years, Shannon had sent letters to animal testing labs around the country, literally thousands of letters she's sending to these places, these places offering to take any animals that they no longer need for research. And she really never got a reply from anybody. But then there's this guy, his name is John Reiner, and he is the owner of Animal Health Innovations, which is a dog and cat testing facility in Nowata, Oklahoma. And he had been receiving Shannon's letters for years and never reached out to her. But um, as a contract researcher for flea and tick products, John would euthanize lab animals. I promise it gets better, you guys, okay? Okay which unfortunately is a common practice in the industry if they had health issues or they couldn't find a home after testing, which usually they wouldn't try to, you know, take the time to find a home for these animals. And John had about 150 dogs on his property at the time, and he would reuse them for experiments rather than euthanize them, which I'm like, that's, you know, not sick. (laughs) That's not the best way to go about it. But in this article I was reading at the beginning, he was saying it as if he was, you know, doing a good thing there. But 
When dogs were not involved in a study, which generally lasted between 60 to 90 days, he kept all of the dogs outdoors. A few years later, in 2021, John replied to Shannon and began giving Beagle Freedom Projects the dogs and cats he no longer needed for, re quote, research purposes after a Department of Agriculture inspector flagged concerns over the poor condition of some of John's senior dogs. So again, it's kind of like, oh, he's he decided to take her up on this offer and, um, it was really just because he got flagged for the senior dogs having health issues. Quote, God, gotta love his quote. Dogs are designed to withstand weather. Dogs weren't meant to live with man. Man created that. Yes, the dogs go through slight discomfort, but we're not mistreating the animals. Maybe a wolf, not a beagle. Yeah. Named exactly. Lily. Oh, with her big floppy ears. Oh, I love beagles. She just wants a couch to sit on. Um, he went on to say that he believes that animal testing is important to ensure products are safe and effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I did a little soul searching, so he says, and I didn't want to euthanize my dogs. It's just hard to find a home for that many, John said when he replied to Shannon's numerous letters. Shannon and her team are stoked. They're like, okay, this guy's going to take us up on this thing. And they start doing rescues at John's facility, rehoming groups of cats and dogs. Also, keep in mind that Shannon and this foundation are in LA and this guy's place is in Oklahoma. So they're driving that whole way wow. and getting the dogs and either rehoming them locally if they can or rehoming them back in California or along the way. So even though they were on complete opposite sides of the spectrum when it came to using animals for research, Shannon said she was glad that they could give these dogs a quality of life in the end. After visiting John's facility a few times, she took a little look at his 30-acre property and was like, you know what? This looks nice. We've got a few ponds. Um, again, it's on 30 acres. So she got an idea. And just a few months ago, now in 2023, Shannon told John that his facility would make a great animal sanctuary. Wow. Surprisingly, John uh, said he never really thought about it, but honestly, he was hoping to retire. So he came back at her with an offer to sell his business along with the land, which she declined. She was like, fuck that. I don't want that business. I don't want my name traced anywhere to that business. Because think about how... If she would have done that, like buy them out, she would be an owner of the business, which is, you know, there's a paper trail. That would look awful just for this plan to go. No, that's stupid. So she, she was like, no way. So she offered to instead buy the property, not the business. And after some negotiations, he accepted. As a part of the deal, John had to surrender his contract research license and committed to no longer testing on animals. That's amazing. So she's like, you're retiring and you're never doing this ever again. And I'm taking this entire property and your little dogs too. She's like the anti crow de Bell. He also gave Shannon custody of more than 200 cats and dogs that were on his property. Wow. So when he spoke to the Washington Post, he said at the end of it, quote, I appreciate Beagle Freedom for what they do. The sale was finalized on February 8th and the testing facility was shut down, bitch. Bye, bitch. So since then, Shannon and her team have been transforming the property, which they now call Freedom Fields. Wait, that gave me chills. That is such good marketing. Isn't that sweet? Freedom Fields, let these Beagles run free and Freedom Fields, everyone has a set. Second chance at life. That's pretty. Thanks. They were now turning all of the, the facility into a rehabilitation site for former lab animals, many of whom are scared and anxious and have health issues, including seizures, arthritis, and cataracts. Mm -hmm. It's the cataracts. Their plan is to open a senior dog center on the property with orthopedic beds, water treadmills, and ramps to help elderly pups who spent their lives as test subjects regain their strength and learn socialization before they are rehomed. Our ultimate goal, of course, she says, is to get them into homes. But until that happens, they're going to live at Freedom Fields in the most luxurious life they could ever have. Um, they also plan to create a space that caters to cats, as well as an education center, because she wants the public to come. She wants the public to meet the visitors and teach them about animal testing and alternatives to it and why it's so bad. And for people to see with their own eyes that, yeah, animal testing still happens. It happens frequently. And this is what it looks like. In addition to rescuing and rehoming lab animals, Beagle Freedom Project also focuses on advocacy. It's Beagle Freedom Bill, which requires labs to offer healthy dogs and cats for adoption once experiments have ended, has passed in 13 states. They've all done this. Like Shannon and her team have made this happen. They passed this bill in 13 states and the organization is currently working to make it a federal law. 
which is like, yeah, why would we not? You know, Mm -hmm. they also have an app called Cruelty Cutter, which helps customers scan products and see whether they have been tested on animals or not. According to this article, this has never been done. No one has ever closed down an animal testing facility and turned it into a rehab sanctuary. Um, There's still renovations happening on the property. They've done a lot for the dogs and outdoors and everything, but they, you know, they need money. So I did make a donation on behalf of Camp Shady Birch today. And yeah, we're not partnered with them or anything. No affiliation. I just wanted to spread the good word. And you know, if I'm going to talk about their story here, I just I have to, you know, step up and and help out where I can help out. So I did put in a nice donation for Camp Shady Birch. And if anybody out there wants to learn more about them, or um, make a donation, it's going to a great place. It's for a great cause. If you just look up Beagle Freedom Project, they will come up and um yeah that's that on that she saved like over 3400 animals including the animals at john's facility you know who would love this who scoot marie scoot marie we're actually gonna take scoot marie down to freedom fields and let her see yeah like what could have happened to her yeah. if we didn't take her around thank god we did no the story is amazing i watched the video this morning when we were talking about it and even if the dogs don't get adopted because of like socialization issues or health issues she's like that's fine they'll just live here the rest of their lives in luxury like yeah. she truly is dedicated to the mission and to turn like a hell into some sort of heaven for these animals mm-hmm. it's just like really poetic and incredible and um she is what we all should strive to be. And thank you for doing a donation. That was a real sweet treat. I knew you were going to do. Yeah, of course. And in, in, in honor of all of us here. Mm-hmm. Wow, Everyone campers. here at Camp Shady Birch. We are a charitable group, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay, so what is your story? Sorry, I had an energy drink if I was reading super fast. You had a lot to say and you got through it. I did. I, was, I honestly skipped the last two paragraphs, but we're here. What have you got? I have an article from ABC News. Um, It's titled, Airlines Required to Refund Passengers for Canceled and Delay Flights. You sent this to me. I'm going to be honest. I didn't read it, but I read the headline and I got excited. This is major news for any of our traveling campers. Anyone that's been screwed over by a flight being changed and them saying, whatever, not our problem. We'll rebook you when we rebook you. It's been a really aggressive, hostile environment for travelers um, for many years now. And the government stepping in. Good news for air travelers. The Department of Transportation on Wednesday announced it is rolling out new rules that will require airlines to automatically give cash refunds to passengers for canceled and significantly delayed flights. This is a big day for America's flight um, flying public, said the Transportation Secretary. How do you say his name? Pete Buttigieg? <laughs> what? The I guy, have no idea. He was the gay guy that ran for president. I let's call him Pete. Pete? No, but they need to know who he is. I'm saying his name so incorrectly. Okay. You don't remember him at all? Uh, yeah, but I don't know how to pronounce the, the, the his primaries. Name. Yeah. So it's you know what's so funny about that? Let's talk about that for a minute. When people lose the primaries, they eventually get cast in the ensemble. They do, and this is an ensemble like, cast. Even Kamala was running. Yeah. And she backed out, and she was like, "Fine, I'll take vice." Yeah. They like, like hated each other, and now they're like. We done and done. Pete was like, Joe, I could beat you any day. And Joe was like, I'll beat your ass. And then Pete's like, fine, I'll take transportation secretary. <laughs> like they always get recast. Um, so so he was like, so he, this is his job. This is like the big deal for him. He's like, it's a big deal for American Flying Public on Wednesday. Um, he said the new rule, which will require prompt refunds, are the biggest expansion of passenger rights in department's history. There are so many layers to it, and it's actually really exciting. So airlines can no longer decide how long a delay must be before a refund is issued. Thank God. Under the new DOT rules, the the delays covered would be more than three hours for domestic flights and more than six hours for international flights. So if it's delayed more than three hours, which we've late, remember that flight recently that we were going on? Oh, to the cruise. We were delayed more than three hours. Oh yeah. Okay. So like we, we went anyways, but I'm saying like that would have been covered. Okay, so then is it issued a refund and you can still get on the plane? Or no. is it issued a refund and you have to go home? Well, I think I think like you if you choose that that doesn't work for you, they'd be like, Well, we gave you an option before, but now you can be like, I want the money. It's, airlines are so snarky. And not I'm not talking about the pilots, I'm not talking about the the no, people the big who business are on behind the plane. it. Yeah, the business the is behind it. The uh, big plane. Like everybody's just relax. My God. 
So this includes tickets purchased directly from airlines, travel agents, and third-party sites such as Expedia and Travelocity. Mm. So it's like right across the board. Okay. The DOT rules lay out that passengers will be entitled to a refund if their flight is canceled or significantly changed, and they do not accept alternative transportation or travel credits offered. So they'll give you the opportunity, but you can take the cash if you want. DOT will also require airlines to give cash refunds if your bags are lost and not delivered within 12 hours. Wow. Within 12 hours. They're like really putting a fire under the airplane's ass. Because you know what? Everybody at a big airplane can literally sit back in their comfy little lazy boy recliner and get things done when they want to get things done. But it's like, no, bitch. Like, let's get it together. The refund must be issued within seven days, according to the need, the new DOT rules, and must be in cash unless the passenger chooses another form of compensation. I want back massages. I want pack sun bucks. Airlines can no longer issue refunds in form of vouchers or credits when consumers are entitled to receive cash. Good. Airlines will have six months to comply with all the new rules. So we have to give them some time to le- lean into it, teach teach the whole crew out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, Butetage said that the DOT is also protecting airline passengers from being surprised by hidden fees. A movie estimates will have Americans billions, or will save Americans billions of dollars every year. So this is includes like people who prepay for Wi-Fi or seat selection or in-flight entertainment. Like they weren't giving people refunds on those when things got awry. I'm so excited for this. I feel I like know. It, big news like this in like especially like the world of transportation never happens. Well, this all kind of came about with like a, like a, a real push for this. I don't know. We were talking about this earlier. I don't know if you campers remember, but do you remember during the 2022 holiday travel season, Southwest, like their whole entire system went down for like two days? I vaguely remember. There was a hundred. They, they like the government sued or like fined – um southwest airlines 140 million dollars for the operational meltdown and how much they've been overcharging people they probably just had that in their pocket they were like oh yeah this is from how much we've been overcharging our customers so to, he says pete Buttigieg says to be clear we want the airline sector to thrive it is why we put so much into helping them survive the pandemic read and honestly it's why we're being so rigorous on the passenger protection it's so true because like the airline industry needed the government bailed them out because no one was traveling during covid we saved their asses and now they're they've done nothing to support the consumer they're changing everything they're jacking up prices and like i have had friends that have had like an airline cancel on them and then they don't get rebooked for like three days look at that guy remember that guy who jumped on that flight yeah. That was oh my bad. god, wait, we have a lot of plane related stories. Well, you the, had that story, I had the other one where they were flying to like a random country. Oh my god. The and doors gonna, are opening, the windows gonna, are falling off. Oh my god, I don't want to talk about that. Is anyone on a plane right now? It's gonna be fine. Everything's meant to jiggle like that, I promise. I just think this is a really tight, tight mm, say like, it again. It's a really tight um like plan. There's mm-hmm. like hours, there's minutes, there's markers, and if they can't comply they're going to have to pay up. And I really think we're going to start seeing efficiency skyrocket because they're <sighs> no not... No pun intended. Well, they're not going to want to lose money. No. If there's this much money in line for an entire play and people to have the grounds and the government supporting this with like legal action, these planes are going to start running way more efficiently. And I'm excited because I think um, there is some corruption being taken place. And this is a win for the American public. Yeah, and I'm gonna um I'm gonna get on my bald eagle tonight and fly around camp and just sing sing my songs of praise. Grab your bug juice and bear spray, campers! It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to take a hike, campers. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. I have something I want to tell to take a hike. Get it off your freaking chest, bitch! You know those weird pods. That are in like flower bouquets. Specifically, they're called the lotus pods. You talk about these more than anybody else does. You're going to have to put a visual up. You have to give a little bit more of a descriptor because I know because you don't stop talking. Okay. For our um, our audio only listeners, go either Google lotus pods. (laughs) I said, give them a description. You said, okay, Google it, bitch. (laughs) Okay. I'll give you a description. They They look like fucked up, rusty shower heads that maggots crawled into and they're using as a hotel. Is that a good visual? Did it work? Someone just gasped. Okay. Two cameras just got up. 
<laughs> well, I saw this girl on that's what they look like. They're like flowers in a flower bouquet, but they're not flowers. Like they're I think they're nuts that's on the inside or something that they use in they use in like Asian cuisines or something. So if you take the nut out <laughs> in that's, Asian cuisine. Yeah, that, they do. And if you take the nut out and like you they sell it by themselves, it looks fine. It looks like a little macadamia nut. But when it's in the pod and somebody's putting it in their fucking flower bouquet, like I want to die. I saw a girl on Pinterest holding it walking down the aisle that's grounds for divorce babe that is shooting yourself in the foot that's ending it before it starts walking down i'm sorry if a camper is listening and this happened to you but like let's rethink that it's the past you and i'm i'm willing to look past it but you walking down and that's all it was it was just like five of these nasty alien-esque what is that phobia that people try try phobia the whole one yeah the one with yeah, holes i, I don't, think you're right i don't have that but i do get a visceral reaction when i look at this it is just something else is nasty i disagree you like them i think there's a time and a place i think they can look really good and i don't love them in a bridal bouquet i will say that or i haven't seen them in the right bridal bouquet but as a flower connoisseur and as someone who loves floral arrangements, I think there is a time and a place. Of course there is. I do think they're they're quite elegant when used correctly. Do I think they need to be pressed up against a daffodil? No, it's a little, the contrast is a little stark and it's a little great. I mean, it's a little crazy. Um, yeah, but you know what though? Like trends come and go and maybe there was a, a trend that someone followed that for their wedding and like they're living with that. The 80s, they had some horrendous hair at their weddings. I'm not, a, not everything has to be timeless. Not everything has to be very like chic or whatever. Whatever. Like, if that's your taste, I support it. I don't love it in a bridal bouquet. I don't hate it in the right context on a tablescape. Okay? I love it in a trash can. That's where I love it. You are so fresh. It looks like an open wound. Who's open wound? A mummy? It's brown. It looks like it's it's a dried piece of wood. Like, you don't like driftwood. Say it right I don't now. mind driftwood. Oh, I'm not hearing that because it's definitely in the driftwood family. No. Okay. You want to, uh, I'm going to get graphic for a second, Cambers. You've been graphic squeamish, the entire episode. If you're squeamish, skip ahead like 30 seconds. Okay. So I saw a picture one time of what happens if you don't wash a garment. And this is why I always wash my garments. And this woman had a thing on her chest and it looked like those pods. And it was because she put on a bra that she didn't wash from the store. I never wash my new clothing. I until always after do. I wash it. You mm -mm. know, what though, but I've I, you've made me feel conscious, self conscious about that. And I've been I've been doing private surveys around camp. Mm -hmm. I've been knocking around. Like I am the camp census bureau. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking for like your age and your race and your gender. I'm asking, do you wash your clothing when you first buy it? Yes or no? I think everybody needs to. Well, that's a you choice. Know, and you know how many returns you tried on something yesterday. And it smelled like B.O. So it was it didn't smell like B.O. It was definitely like a weird fabric. Yeah. And you know what? I don't have any holes in my chest. I'm walking. I'm surviving. I'm actually quite thriving right now. So. Well, that's my take a hike are those Lotus Pods. Nasty, nasty I like nasty the name little. Lotus Pod. It sounds cute, doesn't it? It sounds like a, it would be like a cool coffee place at an air, airport and it has free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Or oh, I'm going to write a Lotus Pod. It has a little shower in there and they have a foot warmer. Oh, that's just the pods. <laughs> Like the pods. Yeah. Oh my god. It's literally just the pod. Or a yeah, like a lotus pod. It's like a spa or something. What's the um show that has the pods? The circle? Oh no, blind blind love blind is love blind is a bat. Love Loving is blind. blind. They're gonna do love is blind. We're a lotus na um, natural too. Where do they grow? Probably everywhere. Asia. Love is blind Asia, and they mm. call them lotus pods. And they're floral. I won't be watching. <laughs> Well, you know what? That'll oh push God. the that'll push the Google image search. That'll like clear it up, and I would like to look at that. Oh, okay, I like that. You love SEO. I do. I you know it's just all I think about twenty four seven. Okay, so that's my take a hike. What are you telling to take a hike? This is so complex. It's really not. Um, I have an addiction to Annie Ann's pretzels. <laughs> okay. Like I don't think a mall experience is complete without an Annie Ann's pretzel. So when we went to the mall on Sunday, I'm I'm on this journey. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to eat better. I'm trying to work out. I might look a little skinnier. If you comment that, I will be happy. But I do think it's a little offensive that they're pumping the smell of sweet, sweet pretzels into the air while I'm trying to behave. Mm -hmm. It's a real struggle to stay on the straight and narrow and not load my face with a soft pretzel. And I do agree in indulging when you need to but 
I indulge every single day and that's a really big one. And I like, I just, I don't know. I need them to have a warning sign in the mall. Like Annie Ann's approaching 300 feet and I'll take a left because to walk by and to not get one, it hurts me because they cracked the code. They They cracked the code on what America is. America is brave, strong, red, white, and blue. And we love a soft pretzel. And I'm talking to the soft pretzel king right now. Jonathan, like his blood type it's sourdough. <laughs> I love Annie Ed's pretzel with the um with the hot chili cheese. The you like the salsa cheddar? The yes. hot salsa cheese. That's what it is. The hot salsa cheese with the diet coke. Every time I was working at the mall, is what I would always get. But I got a lemonade. Also, walking around with a lemonade at the mall while shopping feels so c-word. Well, lemonade doesn't hit for me like it hits for you. Like you really are a big lemonade girl. I'm not. Okay, watch it with a B word. <laughs> <laughs> no, you love like a cup of lemonade. Do you have a glass? I do. I love a glass of fresh squeezed lemonade. I would have rather had a Dr. Pepper. And that's fair. And I don't crave lemonade all the time. Like if I get it out, it's I'm, I'm seeking it out, you know? I just, I don't want this segment to be confused as a crush of the week. Like, yes, they deserve the crush. But right now. But it's now, just frustrating for you. So. The Holy Spirit was a thorn in my side. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because here I am crying in a fitting room because nothing's fitting me. And all I can smell is the sweet, sweet salted pretzels of any ants. It's like, don't rub your flaky kosher salt in my wounds. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's not fair. It's not. Don't nut in my cookie. Don't put salt in my wounds. <laughs> That's how I feel about that. Okay, which is worse? Lotus pod. Is it lotus pods or them specifically in a bridal bouquet? Because we need to clear that up. A lotus pods altogether, but bridal bouquet is like a step worse. <laughs> okay. And I don't know if it could, it looks like an open wound. Okay. You've really I'm sorry. I'm you've sorry. Said I'm sorry. Graphic things about the lotus pods. Okay. Or any ends wafting through the air while you're trying to be good. Um, I'm gonna say lotus pod. I'm going to say any ends because when have you, you've never even seen one in real life, a Lotus Pod. Yes, I have. Where? At the store. What store were you at where they were selling Lotus Pods? AC Moore, maybe. It's, maybe Michael. I'm not sure. No, they both sell them. Yeah. They both in the dried flower section. Okay, so you're right. That is there. I I think we're going to split up today. We're going to go take a left on the right road. I wonder if there's ever going to be a day where I pick yours and you pick mine. <sighs> maybe, but we tend to feel passionate about the ones we picked because we pick them. That's true. But I guess this is almost like court where we're just kind of trying to convince the other. I well, don't know. Who knows what the future holds? Neither of these are going to change the trajectory of our lives. So I think we're okay. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week, campers. This is good. We need to switch gears. I need to be positive. I need to give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. See, it always comes back to church for me. Campers, while we were waiting for our neighbors to come down the stairs, we just sang each other hymns <laughs> quietly into the Hymns and hers. Hymns and hers. Jonathan, who are you crushing on? What you crushing on? What you loving? Oh, wait, we didn't even intro this. So wait. Oh, yeah, you did. I did. I'm just so confused right now. But I'm crushing on ice sculptures. Ooh, do tell. If I walk into any event, any venue space, oh, I agree. a wedding of some sort, quinceanera, <gasps> and there is an ice sculpture, my memory of this event, it's its freezer burned into my brain. You're right. It really, like, you can't forget an ice sculpture event. You really can't. You really can't. And it's just so intricate and, like, such a, like, such a centerpiece, such a talking point, you know? If you have nothing to talk about and you're at a place that has an ice sculpture, talk about the ice sculpture. Hey, how'd they do that? I'm going to tell you, campers. They use chainsaws. Did you know that? Most of the time, they use chainsaws. Do they have, like, smaller chainsaws for, like, specialized cuts? They do. And they have um this thing, it, it just, like, spins a little so it, like, polishes it. And they use a flamethrower. Oh, my God. It's, like, fire and ice. It's all of it together. Fire and ice. Does anyone remember that restaurant? I'll come back to that. I'll talk about that one day. That was a real chain. I don't think I've oh ever heard of that. Oh my God. How am I? Uh, pfft, I'm blown away. I'm blown away right now. Back to ice sculptures. You don't see them enough. No, you don't see them enough. It's but expensive. when I see them, it's so expensive. But when, there's a reason. It's an art, you know? But if we're at a wedding and there's an ice sculpture and we're standing anywhere near the vicinity, <laughs> And you're talking about how your 24-month-old is doing in daycare. I'm not listening. I'm not absorbing any of the information you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm staring 
at the swan that is carved out of frozen water. I would love to shake the hand of the person who is designing this because that's a real art form. I can't even draw a circle some days. Yeah, no. Oh my God. And people are making like a koi fish that's also uh, doubles as a, as a, an ice luge that delivers chilled tequila from its mouth to the, to the patron. No, I agree. It's completely unbelievable. One that comes to mind. Yeah. Down memory lane. We were in Disney for like a Disney trip. We definitely talked about it on the show. It's definitely in a Patreon vlog. They had an ice sculpture. I don't even remember what the ice sculpture was of. Tron. I'm sure because oh. the Tron party. <laughs> I forgot about this one. The basin of the ice sculpture was all shrimp cocktail. The thing with shrimp cocktail is you don't realize how many shrimp you've eaten. And then there's 15 little shells on your little plate. And then you put them on your fingers like acrylic nails. And then a woman walks by from corporate and goes, mm. and then I look stupid. And then we don't get invited back to Disney things. Mm, my hands are reeked like that, the seaweed. That was the night that we lost our portrait at that party our perfect picture oh my god wait speaking of the cookies the caricature speaking of the um the cookies who the artist who made the cookies somebody redid our portrait and then i reached out to them and i don't think they ever responded or maybe i I just got like lost in the sauce somewhere because sometimes sandwich checks and we do have a team looking at the messages but somebody had recreated the portrait that we lost the caricature that that we lost at Disney World. I'll have to look into that. That's just, you know, spiking my memory right now. Put it in the camp archives on the website if you ever find it. Oh my God, I really should. That should be in the lost and found. Yeah, because it was lost and it some it wasn't really found. It hasn't recreated. been found. But back to ice sculptures. How incredible to spend hours, oftentimes days, sometimes weeks on a sculpture well i guess if you're keeping it in a freezed area yeah it's all done in like a freezer you have to keep you have to you have to do it in a freezer and then at the end of it you're literally spending all this time for it to (sighs) melt oh that is not poetic it's so poetic you know what though it is kind of a frivolous cost it's not necessary and that's the beauty of it it's not necessary but when you get it it's like god what a treat it feels like it feels like a solar eclipse yeah it, it, you didn't Happens ask for it, but when it's here, I'm going to stop and stare. I'm too, like, I, one, I don't have the skill set to make a nice sculpture at all. But two, I feel like I'm too, like, selfish with my artwork that if I made a nice sculpture, I would somehow create a mold of it and then make, like, a cement version to keep it forever. And then I make a backup cement version just You'd in case that thing in resin. anything happened. I would I would put it in resin. That would be a lot of plastic, a lot of microplastic, a lot it, of macro plastic. Wouldn't you just melt it right away because isn't, isn't resin hot? Yeah, no, you would have to make the mold first. So you'd have to make the mold out of That's something else, and then you fill it, you know. For someone to be like, it doesn't really look like a koi fish. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Shut up, Bogain. Shut up. Yeah, I would probably make like a table or like a square or something easy. Or a dice. Oh, my God. Think about that. That's smart because it's simple but impactful. Yeah. You're really smart. Thank you. I do my best. I went to school. Um, the first ice sculpture I ever saw was at my cousin's wedding, and it was of her dog. The dog was still alive. She's just like, oh my God, a lot of dog talk today. We need an ice sculpture of Scoop Marie. We do. Princess Girl's pet. She's like, I've been I on know, here for a long time. Oh my God, time. Princess Girl and Scoot Marie. Our new campers are probably confused. <laughs> You'll have to go back and listen to the lore of the show. <laughs> or check our website. We'll put up explanations if you're lost. So what are you crushing on? You look distraught. No, my eyes are just dry as hell. Um, I'm crushing on Anthony. Who? The man who found my wallet this week. Oh, oh, I forgot about this. So my sister was visiting, like I said previously, and the first time they got here, we're like, hey, let's just eat in the house. It's been a busy day of traveling for you guys. So we ordered um, burritos from a place around the corner, truly around the corner from us. It's delicious. Um, And somehow in that mix of going there and picking it up, walking less than a half mile round trip, I dropped my wallet. I didn't even realize it. And it's a card reader wallet, so it's like a small one. And I used to have a big wallet, and I I didn't I don't use that anymore really because it's just I don't want to lose it. And this little little wallet snuck out of my pocket and fell on the ground. I had no idea. So I got this notification while I was eating my burrito and digesting truly, and it said oh a message from someone who's not friends with you on Facebook. People don't really message me on Facebook, right? It's kind of like I get a lot on Instagram, right? But Facebook's different. So I was like, what? What is this? I'm not even used to this notification. And I click it and it's this man named Anthony. And he goes, um, I, I, hello, I think I found something of yours. And I was like, this is cryptic. 
But when I clicked his profile, I knew he was local because he had something in Glendale. Hmm. Where we grow shop. Mm -hmm. Something over there. So I was like, oh, so he's in Brooklyn. This is like weird. What, and I'm like, I wonder if it's my, I wonder if it's my wallet. Like what I lose. And he was like, uh, I was like, what did you find? Just to see what he would say. And he was like, do you live in Brooklyn? And I was like, yes. Stop being cryptic with that. Like, well, why I he... think I, it was confusing because my license is a Massachusetts license still. Okay. So I think he has a name. The picture looks like me, but why would why would someone that lives in Massachusetts and it says I live in Massachusetts? have a wallet in Brooklyn. He could have squashed the beef and just said... This is my crush of the week and you're not going to okay. judge him. You're right. Okay, so... <laughs> you're right, you're right. We confirm. He had the wallet. And before he even answered his first message, he already tried to Facebook video chat me twice before he even tried to text me. So it's like an interesting way to communicate with a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how old was he? Oh, old. Oh, oh, okay. Like maybe like... In his like no, that sounded fresh. He's not old, but he definitely was like in his fifties. Mm. Like fifties is not old. No, like a gentleman now. Okay, he a gentleman. A gentleman. He wasn't young. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we confirmed it was my wallet. I because he wasn't answering me, so I called him back on the video chat, and he was like, "I'm gonna come downstairs right now. I'll meet you." And he told me the cross street he was at. Took my sister. We walked all the way down there, and he gave me back my wallet. And I tried to give him twenty bucks, and he wouldn't take it. And they like forced it on him. I was a little aggressive. I was like, "Just take it, please." Like, and he was like, "I would want someone to do the same thing for me." That's so nice. That's a, that is an earnest yes. fellow. He was on his way back from Family Dollar and saw it right in front of the burrito shop. Wow. And went home, got on his Facebook, like true sleuth detective. He tracked you down and he hit you up. Yeah, I think Facebook is like a really great place to do that, you know, because like for the most part on Instagram, people have like different names and stuff, but like Facebook, it's. It's usually truly a government name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No no nicknames here for the most part. What a nice neighbor, though. It's good to know that people like that live around here. How far was it? Was it a, a, was it a long hike for you to get through? For him, it was probably like, it was like, like I don't know, like five half blocks, two full blocks over. He was pretty far. He didn't live right next to us. Wow. He was happy to come down that street. Well, thank you, Anthony, for returning my man's wallet. That was very nice of you. Yeah, and it only had a couple cards in there and my ID. And I don't really care about like the cards as much because like you can cancel a card, get a new one. But getting an ID again sucks yeah and it would have been mailed to massachusetts hmm. now to go back there to get it or get it someone would send it to me i if know somebody would have returned it somebody could in new york city somebody literally could have never brought it up again and you can't even blame anyone but yourself you know mm -hmm. I mean? when you drop your wallet you can be pissed but you can only piss at yourself because it's your own problem and you did it to yourself and you so, never do that you're very like mm, responsible with everything like keys phone wallet always i couldn't believe it but he took time out of his day to message me and meet me and to try to refuse money for me and was just a good guy. And I said, I walked away. I said, this is my crush of the week. Mm -hmm. Anthony, I think about him every night. I pull up his pictures. I give him a quick prayer. I hope he's well. Campers, um, I just wish him well. You know what I mean? Because he's an honorary counselor at this point. Anthony's a good guy. So we're going to invite him out of the camp. We're going to have a big barbecue. We're going to show him what we're made of. And we're going to show him that we are a strong community. And he is a part of it now. So, What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. I would hum for you or sing, but I think I'm on vocal rest. Why is that? I want to be. Okay. So you sit on vocal rest and I'll tell you about my camp song. What is it? Which is Show Me Love by Robin. Oh, I love this song. Show me love. Show me like what, uh, baby, show me what it's all about. Yeah. You're the one. Oh, my God. Such a good song. That CD I actually had in my CD player a couple months ago when I went to sell my car. Like, I checked. Yeah. my I mean, my radio didn't work, so it wasn't going to play. But when I pressed eject, I was like, is there anything in here? It was that Robin album. Um, so anyway, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. It came out in 1997, written by Robin alongside, do you want to guess who co-wrote it with her? Nicole Scherzinger. No, Max Martin. Of course, Max. Actually, I think we've talked about Max Martin working with Robin before. Max Rob. Martin, yeah, Max Martin's the one who wrote a lot of Britney Spears. Yeah, he's work. written like so many hits. It's just like he always pops up. I'm like, is he never, is he ever, ever not working? Maybe now, but he has his royalty checks now. True, 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 true. Good for him. So she's from Stockholm, Sweden. 
um, her parents owned a, an independent theater company. So she was always around like theatrical people. And she's like, love this. She's loved the gays ever since she was a little girl. Okay. And she was signed in 1995 when she was just 15 years old. And she rushed to finish middle school and high school and signed to Jive Records. I was quickly realizing that I know a lot of Robin songs and I don't really know anything about her. I don't know anything about her. Nine years later in 2004, Robin started putting out new electronic pop sounds and Jive Records said, well, we don't really jive with that. They actually made a, a, a very negative comment about it and she was like, okay, bye. And she dipped and she made her own label and she's like, I'm doing it in an independent label and I'm going to be under it and I'm going to do my damn thing. 2007... She is the backing vocals for Britney Spears' Piece of Me. Really? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, oh yeah. That's Robin? That's Robin. A Miss American Dream. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then in 2010, she starred in season four, episode seven of Gossip Girl, War at the Roses. She also works on the soundtrack of the final season of HBO's TV series, Girls. That makes sense. Yeah, I actually think I did know that. What's the big Robin song? Dancing on my own, yeah. Or call your girlfriend. Is dancing on her on um dancing on your own? Is that though? Is that under her own private label or is that? I believe so. Yeah. That's amazing to put that music, that yeah. kind of like. So she was successful at it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go independent. Exactly, and that's what a lot of she really shook up a lot of stuff, especially for the indie artists. Um, I'm not going to bore you with an article that I read, but if you're interested in it, you can, can read this article. It's by Tom Rossmusen. It's called the Life and Culture, How Robin Became a Queer Icon, an Investigation. And it kind of goes into how she shook things up for people who were into indie music. And she was technically indie music, like Pitchfork, back in the early and mid-2000s, touched maybe two pop songs ever. And just, you know, they didn't want to touch pop songs, but they they were on Robin a lot. They wrote about her positively quite a few times. And um, she became like a gay icon because, you know, the gays love her. Gays love her music. She's like, I got mistaken for a lesbian all the time. I'm not. But like, I love the gays. And if I can be an ally, like, I love that. Yeah. Like, I'm in the corner yeah. watching you kiss her. Like, there's not a, I've never been to a gay gay bar or a gay club and that's not played at least once. Who, and there was that guy who covered that song and everybody thinks that it's their song. And I think the gays got a little bit pissed about it because it's like, it really is like a gay anthem, you know? But yeah. And they try to turn it, it like a sports thing. Yeah. It turned into an NFL thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you can like, like it, but just know that it's, it's origins. Just know that it's a cover. But the yeah, guy it's responded. actually really gay. So I think, it, I think it was the guy who covered it. His, he was on like The Voice or something. It's Robin's song. You covered it and you have a version of it that's very successful, but it will never be your song. It's like the guy who who covered Tracy Chapman's album. Yeah, but song. he did it He did it well because he brought yes. her out and he credited her. That yes. was completely different. What was his name? Who was that? I don't know. I don't know these men. I don't know these men. I only know the women. What is your camp song? Um, my camp song for me is a, is a gay a gay song. But it's, Why are you nervous? Because I said that and it's like definitely not a gay song. Um, how to save a life. Not a gay song at all, but gays have yours, so I guess. Well, I think, I honestly the think the song everybody loves. Mm. The Fray, the year was 2005 and they changed music forever. I will go on record by saying I think The Fray is one of the greatest musical acts to ever exist. They changed the trajectory of my life. They really did. Did you ever see them live? Yes, I did. Wow. I did when I was 18 years old at Lupo's Heartbreak Hotel um, in Providence. And I was maybe five feet away from him. He got in the audience. It was a small crowd. Um, but yeah, I was there. Wow, incredible. That was probably 2014. So like nine years after the song came out. It's almost. It's literally almost been 20 years since How to Save a Life came out. That is crazy so this weekend i was like reminiscing on the fray and i posted on my story being like oh my god like i am like nauseous thinking about how much i love these men like it's crazy like i love their music and so many people dm me being like no you have no you have no idea like i've sobbed and thrown up listening to their music for making myself sick from how emotional it is mm -hmm. I'm like that's that's just like so me but um no i think it's just like one of the best songs ever written when he came out with cable car over my head Everyone knows I'm in over my head. I was I was ten. 
Wow. But it was became like a kind of a soundtrack for my like preteen years. Mm -hmm. I felt really moody. And I liked how the kid in the music video was like a high schooler, but like maybe a freshman. I don't think I've ever seen the phrase music videos. I They're not amazing. I'm going to be okay. honest. I don't think I could point them out in the crowd. What I think about when I think about the fray is like the Edison bulbs, like that. That's the, the album. Swinging. That's the album. Yeah. And yeah. like, honestly, they kind of put Edison bulbs on the map. And then I think Edison put the Edison bulbs on the map. Let's get that straight. Mm, where is it? Let's, let's ask that Thomas Edison. Oh, wait, we can't because he's dead. So anyways, the <laughs> stop. The maid, the lead singer is Isaac Slade. Isaac Slade has no hair. If right away? No, I don't know if he shaves it or it's alopecia or something. Oh. Yeah, he's always had no hair. My friend has alopecia. That's why I'm like, how can you not pick him out of a crowd? He's pretty, like, I, interesting. Looking. I think it's because I, I've never seen a photo. Oh, that's interesting because they have a billion streams on this song on uh, on um, Spotify. Well, that's weird. We million views on the video on YouTube. Well, I'm listening with my ears, not with my eyes. Fine. While you look him up, I'm going to sing my favorite part of the song because I think it's really important to know what part of the song that I literally throat scream in the car. Please. Like, it is guttural, but I'll keep it kind of cute and on mute for you. He will do one of two things. He will admit to everything. Or he'll say he's just not the same. And you'll begin to wonder why you came. Okay, literally, when that buildup happens. Whoa. And I think it's really important to note here when we're talking about the fray. Who really jolted them to another level of iconicness? TRL. No. Grey's Anatomy. Oh, obviously. Grey's Anatomy was really, in its golden years, had such a, a finger on the pulse when it came to music. Oh my God, this guy from The Fray? 54 years old? Who's that? That's uh, Dan Levery. Levery. Is he? A, he must... He's an American musician born June 11th, 1969, who was professionally nominated for two Grammy Awards as part of the band Tonic. Uh, Tonic. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Oh for... no, he was he was in the fray. So he's been with Tonic since uh 1986, and Tonic is the one who sings the. If you could only see the way she loves me, maybe you don't. From now one, track seven, don't. It's a fact. No, I, I believe it's a fact. Yeah. So anyway. There was that like horrible music episode where they made the entire cast sing as if they were all professional singers. It's actually so awful, the episode. But I, it's like really iconic because it's it was such a wild choice. Why did they do that? Was it just to like test the because Glee? Was it because of Glee? It probably was because of Glee. It's probably because the network will like Shonda Rhimes could wake up and like the network would say whatever she wants to do, they'll do. Because Shonda Rhimes has that like touch. Like whatever she touches is gold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I don't think that I, I think the legacy of the episode lives on because of how weird it was, but not because it was like actually good singing you know what i mean right callie torres was on there popping her pussy and then she shook her way to um, um just like that and now she's off of that can you believe it somehow I guys can. it's a beautiful day to save lives it is. i'm kind of so i was kind of ready for like a grace rewatch i'm like i'm itching for it that's a lot that's a lot to commit to i fully support it but i'm just like i'm saying overall it's been on for Many a moon. Yeah, but when I say a rewatch, I mean I want to rewatch the first nine seasons. Oh, okay. So just like an afternoon. That's well, a lot. No, it's a lot, but it's so captivating and good. I was watching a montage clip with that music playing on YouTube, and it was like Christine Yang, and like they were just doing all these like surgeries or whatever and bantering back and forth. I'm not going to go into details, but it like put something in me. And as a Grey's lover, I was bit by the bug. Mm. You know what I mean? And now, and now I need a Whipple. I was going to say, somebody get this man a Whipple. Somebody get this man a Whipple. The only thing that that is more popular than the fray on Grey's Anatomy is the Whipple. Equally we still don't know what it is. No, it's some sort of abdominal surgery, but I'm not sure of the specifics. Anyways, as always, both of our songs will be linked in the episode description for a free Spotify playlist and a free YouTube playlist if you're interested in listening. Um, but yeah, I love the fray. I'm ready to go on a long car ride. And start belting out some music. I remember singing that when we were coming back from Tennessee. Do you remember that? That was I like the first time we were that. blasting it. And we were like, oh, we both love the fray. Okay. It's just, it's something about our age group. Like it was just a real soundtrack of our lives. So good. 
Anyway, thank you so much for listening, campers. We would greatly appreciate it if you gave us five-star review. It really helps us out a lot on the back end, and we graciously appreciate your kindness. So, um, yeah, we'll see you. What day is it? Wednesday. Yeah, we'll see you on Monday, and then we'll see you on Wednesday, and then we'll see you on Monday again, and then we'll see you on Wednesday again. And we'll see you forever. Thank you so much for being here. With that being said, lights out, campers. campers.